When the phrase Final Nine is mentioned, this will be the one that history remembers. What it took is gone. What it takes is here. It's not what you're made of. It's what you're made of in this moment. Hello and welcome to the final nine holes of the 2021 PDJ Professional World Championship presented by Grip6 from Ogden, Utah at the Fort. It's Big Sexy Barry, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. An event two years in the making. We have been waiting for the World Championships for such a long time and we are here at the final nine holes. Macbeth holding onto a one-shot lead over James Conrad Kevin Jones, actually a one-shot lead over no one because he is currently tied with Chris Dickerson from the chase card, but a one-shot lead over three others, two shots over Calvin Heimberg. I, you cannot script a more tense final nine holes. Hole 10, par four, 598 feet through the triple Mando. This is Gatekeeper Media chase card check-in. I'm out of position here. Our pro dart has to go through. You cannot shape a better looking approach than that right there. Fantastic. So soft getting through and missing the Guardians as well. I mean, you can aim as much as you want, but it does take a little bit of sneakiness to get through without hitting anything as you and Chris oh, wow. both do successfully. Chris's drive was huge, but just a little too far left for your liking. Chris for the birdie. Edge of circle. Actually, that looks outside circle one. He drops his head oh, and he hates it. He loves it now. It, this was so funny. I asked him, did you think you missed it? He said, yeah, but you got to play it cool. He said he looked down and then he heard the cheers. <laughs> if you miss your line, you don't tell anyone about it. You just walk to the next shot and put your hand up. Sorry, Chris. I'm telling everybody. <laughs> And that is pure as pie, dead center. And obviously we need to note, as Chris is tied for the lead, he is holes ahead. And so Correct. these guys, uh, if they can match. Boom sauce? Boom sauce, but left a yeah, little bit, left. a little bit. That's oh, no. humongous. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's so good. James Conrad, one over through three holes. Now, three birdies since then, and he is a couple under on the round. Kevin Jones, this is also big, but this is in that slightly more left than you'd like to be category. It's gonna be an awkwardly cut off skip shot, most likely. That skip shot is made difficult. There are rocks right there at the entrance. Big boulders, I should say, not just rocks. And Calvin hates this. And hates it even more now with the big skip off the booster little ramp there. So much distance, but that doesn't matter really at all if you don't have an angle on that second. Kind of a helping win, but what happens with that helping win, if you don't keep it low like this and get it flat, it is going to drift left. This is going to be absolutely prime oh, yeah. time. Yep. Yeah, that is the farthest and the best angle. Beautiful shot for Macbeth going to town, going to school, I should say, on the other competitor's shots. Nice. Oh, that's great. And it looks like it's going to be absolutely perfect, but it it's such a cutoff angle that even with the big skip left, he's still pushing the right side of the green, which is the most well guarded on the hole. Oh, James, that's that's early tree, long putt coming. Chris Dickerson range. You see how much more simple Paul's shot looks from the good angle. And that will be the closest, the only guaranteed birdie. Oh, 
James from 40. He loves it. Why not? Four down the last five. Great time to push. Calvin, it's just been ever so slightly off, and I feel like that was the that was the biggest miss he's had thus far. Great little angle there from the um, sky cam there to show that he was a little bit cut off, had to hit a small gap, but does, and he's excited about it because that was a little more difficult than even we know, I feel like. Kev just won back of the pace Macbeth is setting. And despite some struggles for Calvin, he is still right there. He's 31, 34 the lead. So many difficult holes still to come. Chiefly among them is one, this one, uh, number 11, par three, 484. If you can deuce this, you're getting strokes. This is such a hard birdie to get because the line is not very obvious. Not only is it 484, but it's a woodsy shot. You've got to get it way up high, turned hard right, and then a big flex back to the left. You'd like to finish right of the basket, but that's almost impossible. You're hardly seeing anybody achieve that because you can see this branch with all these little leaders going up. It's like a fence in front of the basket if you're on that left side. Now it looks calm here, but once you get above the tree line, there is a right to left win, which is extremely difficult for this exact shot. Once the disc gets turned over, it doesn't want to fight back as its usual flight pattern. So getting it flat, as you see that one, gets over he got that way right yeah yeah gets over and then pushes to the right side so if you get it turned over just that much more difficult to get it to come back on this one with that wind kev going full wide flex but that just isn't enough turn yeah just not a hundred percent committed to that angle maybe scared from James's shot, seeing his and how it pushed so far right. Let's see if Macbeth can learn from those two, make the corrections, widen this gap a bit. I like it. And I think he's made the uh. correct adjustments. This is looking great. Can it get through everything at the end? No. Not the last tree, and that that is the difficulty of this hole. You know, you have a great looking shot like that. You just can't really rely on every single shot getting through only the best of the best and here's the here's a great view of what happens once you get it turned over on this hole for the whole entire week okay these guys have been able to throw that same shot and then it comes out all nice and penetrates to the bucket i think calvin had the best shot to Gatekeeper Media for Chase Card Check and Chris Dickerson, 34 under, just one hole ahead. So currently, right now, he is tied with Macbeth. And that is a fantastic drive on the difficult 12. You're going sidewinder forehand, trying to go for a turnover line. Starting right, and it's moving right and over really? the fence. Oh, OB. Over it. Interesting. Brutal. Couldn't oh. have been by more than three, four inches. They said it hit it. It just trickled over. Oh, my goodness. That's a terrible break. Kevin going to have an obstructed par putt from just about 25 feet, maybe yeah, just inside that. Yeah, not the best little layup there. It's the one you have to get past. Now he's going to have, with his type of putt, too, the down to upward swing. It's going to be tough. Let's see if Jungle James is able to get up and down. And uh, yeah. Ooh, that was maybe running it if it could get past that tree. Yeah, get up and down was maybe a, it was a little bit easier than I thought. That was certainly a birdie effort. As is this. Oh, that same tree wreaking havoc. 
I've been there before in that same position. You can see the basket through the Y, and so it gives you a little hope, and then steals it. Yeah, smacks it right away. Calvin, can he make the adjustment and make it's the sixth, sixth missed putt that we've seen from circle two. Kevin, good par save. So no harm, no foul on this card. There will be all pars. I like the work Kevin's doing, though. These are tricky little 25-footers that he's making good from. Even this shorty from Paul, he's having to straddle out left, and he's only... 18 feet from the basket. Those are ones you can't take for granted because very easily they can slip away. Saw Ele it, yeah, saw it happen all week. 11 and 12 are probably the most heavily guarded greens on the entire course. Not just prominent big trees. We're talking trees that are smaller than the size of your wrist are surrounding the basket 360 degrees. So where you end up is so important. Chris Dickerson, second shot on the 12th. This could put some pressure on Macbeth here. This would be to take the lead. That is in oh, the creek. Oh, no. Terrible kick. And this is hard because you really can't reach to your side that much with that fence being so close. Only one meter of relief. 10 out of 10 difficulty here. Yeah, wow. Great shot there. Just to give yourself a look at the par. Now, Chris, from that perfect drive, kicking OB, he really doesn't have a look for par. And you can really see how obstructed this basket is. Those trees are all within 10 feet of the basket. Oh, my goodness, an incredible effort. Hitting the gap perfectly, but just a bit short. Big putt here. Huge putt. To stay at 33. Ah. Shoot. And that's oh. calling that in the best words that you could find right there. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, shoot. My words were would, would be a little bit different that might not be able to make coverage. <laughs> Internally. There's more going on. Let me tell you that. So bogey for Chris and myself on 12. Let's see how these guys play it. Super narrow tee shot. You saw where Chris landed. That's pretty much perfect. But then your, your, your work is still not done. So many small trees to dodge on the way to the green. 510 feet has maybe never felt so daunting. James Conrad. Uh, absolute Oh, wow. Gem right there that tree dissects that little gap and if you're right by it that means that you're going to have a good shot on your second yeah and that gap that oh oh that, no that gap you're going for you can barely roll a cart through there and that is the fairway that they're giving you here kevin's forehand looked so good just barely just a, a couple degrees too far left James, I'm, excuse me, Paul knows that if you don't get that thing moving left, you're not going to have a shot, and it moved way too far left. Horrible kick, honestly. Kick, yeah. Oh, no. And Calvin knows how bad that is. It is, you're dead to rights left. Early left is just where hopes go to die. Calvin needs a big shot here to keep the dream alive. He needs to get a par on hole 12. Oh, and that, you can just kind of feel oh. it slipping away from Calvin. It, Only a few holes left, and with so many people in contention, chase card included, like, I just don't see it happening for, for him. Even with a birdie out scenario, you got to think – one of the top six athletes on the planet is going to match that going forward. It, he, needs, he needs something good here. 
I mean, par feels. A oh, par is not almost the, impossible. No. I mean, wow, get over there. Bo oh, bogey doesn't really even seem possible right now. That that is a double bogey scenario. Kevin Jones, birdie still alive. Yeah, and this is in a really a great spot. Oh yes. <sighs> oh, Kevin Jones, what have I just seen? That was an incredible shot from way back. Oh goodness, that was a, that was a special shot from Kevin. Paul looking upwards with Thummer. Now remember, Ob Creek left. OB fence right. This is hyper aggressive. Okay. That's a manageable par scenario. And if you're wondering why the 1,400 spectators here watching aren't that loud right now, these fairways are too tight. Spectators are diverted away from this area. We'll see them again in a moment. That's really about as much as you can do. Calvin going to have to knock down a big putt or he's going to be looking at a six. Can James put this close? Can that oh, yeah. put the brakes? Yeah. Brakes. Oh, yes. He hangs on. I don't think that that was going to be sitting anytime soon, even if he – I think that was a great little kick. I think that was going deep, OB. You could be right. Can't ask for much more than circle one. And this – does it get the bounce? What a, what a shot. Unbelievable. Trick shot using his imagination, creativity at its <laughs> finest. How did he pull that out in the world championships with seven holes left? I guess six and a half holes left. How do you just do that? Unbelievable. Calvin, that's, um, I don't want to say nail in the coffin, but it might be. I mean, that's. With James taking a birdie and going to 34, Paul having a par putt, James and Paul are going to be tied. Kind of out of nowhere, James just kind of yeah. goes on this crazy birdie streak. It seemed like Paul was in complete control. One bogey, though. That's two. Then another one picks up one more. Yes. And now all of a sudden he's like... Three-way tie, Kevin Jones at 34. Three players in the mix. And then we've got Chris Dickerson and and Nate Sexton still in the mix on Chase Card. Wow. We've got hole 13 coming up. You want to take us through this one, Yuli? Yeah, again, one of my favorites on the course. This is a shorty. But I just have a feeling at the World Championships when there are muskets, this one is tough. You have to go up left, drift something right, have perfect speed control, and if you don't throw it perfectly, that's what you'll end up. And you have high rise creek three feet from the basket out of bounds, so it has to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, you're going to be shaking in your boots with the putt that it leaves you. Yeah, and advantage kevin jones right here as far as james and kevin but kevin is that is a very scary putt that i don't think he can lay up Spell, two, spells disaster if he misses it two stroke swing hole right here is that a this is moving towards the creek what a tree okay and that's i think that was that was curl like twisting out right look at Macbeth pulling out a thumber how many thumbers have we seen him throw in tournament play going bank shot off the fence in the last hole to save the par and then a thumber. And he to throw the bank shot, he had to throw a thumber from there. So that's two and three holes. So we see him do it quite a, quite often. And nowadays, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin coming up short here. And no good drives. If the forehand is paramount on this hole if you have it. So this is, in a way, the anti-James Conrad shot. It is a very difficult backhand turnover. And now he is left with a very difficult decision. Makes our job yeah. really fun because now they all have that inside 50 foot look. Mm -hmm. Nobody inside the circle. This will test your nerves yep. straight down to the core of who you are. I think we all know who this guy is. He's that guy. Wow. He's, He's that always guy. been that guy. 
unreal. So, Assuredly, uh, if he misses it in any way, yep. he is out of bounds, taking a four. Oh, my gosh. How do you make an elevated 48-footer with danger behind on the pole in the world championships like that? You're a five-time world champion. That's how. And James lays up. He says, you know what? I feel like Paul's going to go for this. I'm going to lay this up. I don't believe you can make it. I like, I mean, or James just feels like he, oh, that's his play. Gosh. Make or miss. Go, survive. Get to the next hole. Play it for another day. Yes, but I. we've also seen him run it and sure. make it. Sure, From a similar distance as Kevin inside that. those. Wow. Even after seeing Macbeth make his... I'm surprised to see Kevin lay up. That I I like the play. I mean, if there's any doubt whatsoever creeping into your mind, then you're gonna miss that putt. I mean, how often do you feel like you've ever stepped up to a putt where you felt like danger, 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 and then made it? That doesn't seem to happen very often. So Kevin, listening to his body, and again, also playing it to see to play another hole. Now the par four 14th low ceiling drive with OB down the right. Eventually you do have to cross the out of bounds Creek to reach the green. You'd like to throw a low distance driver, big skip, and then set up a hyzer approach. Macbeth has this roped. Can it miss these trees? Yes, it can. That's very yep. left, but it's also very far. Almost like a breather hole. Now you're able to get a full swing, kind of swing freely after the last like four or five holes, specific shots. Mm -hmm. Now you have stock shot. Okay, let's relax. Let's hit, hit this gap, throw it low. James absolutely piped. That's a little bit better than me. Yeah, fast. I agree with that. That's straighter. So it's going to open up that approach over the creek and a little bit more natural angle. Yeah, I feel like the other three competitors have that sidearm turnover to where if they do get left, they kind of have options to even still push the green. But James has to land in a specific landing zone to be able to shape that putter approach or mid-range into the green. So pressure was on him a bit more, I feel like, to make that shot. And yeah. this is pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. that's... It's pretty good. It, it, it's great that he's made that initial gap and got a lot of distance, but that angle is going to be a little bit tight. A little bit tight there. I feel like Calvin's going to let out a little aggression. Let's hope. Mm, a little too much. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, a terrible roll. Mm -hmm. Could have just sat down. He's still got opportunities from there unless it tucks in behind that tree. Back to Gatekeeper Media's chase card check-in. Nate Sexton, three under for the round, 32 total. Needing a basically a birdie out scenario and a beautiful shot on the tight hole 15. So that'll get you to 33. Still hunting. This dog will hunt. And... Calvin has to just pipe this. Yeah. But he's in a situation where he can kind of swing oh, yeah. freely and just across the creek. Fine. I yeah, mean, just and rip it. Little window there. That'll be pretty easy par. I don't think we're going to see anything too wildly aggressive to try to make that. I, I can't imagine that Calvin's thinking his chances of winning are still on the table. Still a lot to play for outside of a win. Correct. Biggest payout in world's history on the line today. $16,500 to the winner. And the second biggest payout for first place in disc golf history as well. Second to another event that Grip6 was the title sponsor for last year's disc golf pro tour finale. James Conrad. The fire continues. Another look for birdie. Uh, excuse me. Kevin in a compromised position. Oh, oh my no goodness. way. The creativity and the just raw power. Those trees aren't small. That, well, that was over 300 feet to the pin from there. Macbeth going to get creative. 
Through the back door, can it fight? Oh yeah, okay, so that's a look. That's left of the green? Yes, I, I believe that's left and long. It's deep of the green and it's gonna be slightly obstructed, but it's a look. Tough little pinched oh, off no, sidearm. I was, I was wrong. ripped at it. Okay, so Calvin is still chasing. I like that. Swing a bit compromised with that high grass. That's just annoying. And vision compromise as well. Are oh, you serious? Wow. Oh my gosh. How can you keep doing this? Back to back huge putts. Let's see this again. Oh. I mean, th that just looks like it was a normal putt from that angle. It was anything but. Well, you can tell by the stroke that that's not his normal stroke at all. He has to have a short swing and bring it from high to low. He's an aggressive putter. That disc rarely gets above the rim inside 40 feet. And James oh, get in there. just sneaks that in the left side just to stay with us within his stroke of Paul. Oh, incredible. Kevin also stays within his stroke. Or oh, two, excuse me, two strokes. Save of his tournament, though. Calvin uh, misses it mm. low. Mm. On to 15, par three, 313. You just saw me play it. It's got that tight gap early and then a million little trees late. Big hyzer is an option, or you just have to hit those low straight windows. Pick one and try to find your way through. Normal scenario, this gap looks pretty big. First few rounds of the tournament. Last round, the initial gap gets small and then the ones after that gets even smaller. Paul has thrown a beauty, missing everything. I mean, this is how you win the world championships. You put yourself in position and then you execute down the stretch, putting the pressure on everyone else. James, huge pressure on this shot right here. Low, high. Is it high, enough to clear the log? Just not enough. Oh, it looked like it did for a second and it's a 40 footer. With Paul parked. Well, not parked. This is um, uh, really well. Okay. Oh, wow. yeah, great ground play. <laughs> yes. 70 feet of slide, and he needed every single inch of it. Gatekeeper Media, Island Hole 16. One of the prettiest views you're going to see in the sport. And one of the most important tee shots of your life. Oh, the fire butt bird and sticking the landing. Doing what you can. So important for the second card to get into the clubhouse with a score, post a leading score before lead card comes in. Anything can happen. Chris, from the drop zone after missing the island just barely to the right. To save the par. Wow, come on. Must make. 
That's a little bit of separation there between you and Chris. Like you said, you're not just, obviously you're going for the world title here, but biggest payout in world's history. There's pride in everything, not just winning in this tournament. Calvin, a good approach. Kevin, Kim, let's go! Hammer fist. That was a huge putt. Let's go! Kevin Jones. Oh. I just got the chilly chills. Look at that little leaf kick and bang. Love the reaction from the kid. <laughs> that is hype. Oh, man. Living up to the moment. James, also short side of log, needs to make it. And oh makes it. Oh my gosh, what a putt. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're saying nice park job, Paul. It's not going to buy you much. And that's match play at its finest. Okay, you're parked. Watch this. Now the pressure's on Paul, and I mean, he's just cool as a cucumber. And I can't stress this enough. The putts that they made, you see Kevin's go off branches. You see um, James's stay low enough. Like, this is a high-rise basket. That's going 30 pass if either of those miss metal in any way, and they just Ugh. hit center, center pole. I mean, that is incredible to stay in that much control yeah. of the situation. And Calvin has now turned into a spectator, as yeah. we have. You play a lot of holes out here, but this one is in your mind. You're waiting for this one because it's a two-stroke swing. You have to stick this island if you're going to win the world championship. 319 feet of just pure Get down quick. Beauty. Get down stick, quick. Stick. Oh, wow. Putting the brakes on at just the right moment. And that is huge. James Conrad, he's going for the high backhand hyzer, a riskier shot, but comes into the green softer, so he doesn't have to worry about the ground play nearly as much as the more reliable but faster green shot as the sidearm. And look at that, just sticking it. Perfect. Already acing this hole earlier in the week. James has this hole dialed in right now. And I haven't seen anybody else take this line. Like he's taking it so wide and so high, trusting his angle control and trusting gravity to just yeah. do the work. Like this is a trick shot that you play at home to play catch with a buddy. Like this isn't something yeah. that you practice to be like, oh, I'm going to be at the world championships hole 16 and I'm going to just drop a dime <laughs> yes. on these boys. I'm going to aim know? at 90 right of an island green and just let it flex in. Kev needs this to stick. This might need to slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Don't, don't, don't. No, no, not now. No. Oh, and that's it. Unless he can make that drop zone putt, that might be all she wrote for Kevin. Yeah. Either I mean, way, it might be. Yeah. If he, if he makes it, he's looking to be three back. And Calvin, that does not get over the grip six wall, and that's going to go to the drop zone. And the long day continues for Heimberg. Yeah, if Kevin wants any chance... He has to make this because 17, as we watch you do that here, gatekeeper media check-in, we can see how difficult this is. Water carry the whole way. Those guardian trees are evil. Scenario for you is must birdie out to put any semblance of pressure on the lead card. And that is in perfect position. Heimberg just sailing right. Great pace. I thought he had that one.
Kevin for par. Online. Oh, no, 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 sit down, sit down. No. Oh, brutal. And this isn't the first time we've seen that with Kevin. Well, this is, that's oh, what happens on time. island holes. Like, it just ends you. Oh, no. And that's it. Macbeth from 25. Just beautiful Dude. birdie. Look at this stretch of the last four holes. Uh, unreal. And that goes back to that approach shot where he banked it off the fence on 12 to save the par. Hole 11 so difficult. No way. What? Oh Are you gosh. kidding me? No way. I mean, oh, I feel after, for him. Yeah. After what we saw at Portland Open with that, with the just evil hole 15, hole 16 is going to do that to Kevin right now at the World Championships. Really? My, I'm sick to my stomach right now for Kevin. That is so heartbreaking. James does make good from 18 feet. Not a gimme, given the situation, especially after seeing Kevin hit dead center and come right back to him. He has to conquer those nerves to knock that one down and stay confident hitting it hard on the stripe. So I think we're looking at a guy who's he's going to have all the experience to be the best player in the world one day. Kevin Jones, he's paying his dues right now. And, I mean, it's in the most painful way possible, but... Right now, it is the story of Paul McBeth and James Conrad at 38 and 37. Even Birdie Birdie here is going to take a little bit of luck to get back in it for you. But first things first, get up and down from 280 on hole 17. And once again, you're going with that oh, R-Pro dart. So and you just have thrown the most beautiful Woo! shot I think I've seen in person from you yeah. that, that was a good one had to have it I, I mean just shaped as much space as you can shape that shot through the gap you hit the line so beautiful hole 17 par 4 648 you just saw me play it these guys are probably going to go backhand turnover try to push up that fairway as far as possible but you heard yuli say those guardian trees evil you hit one at all you're pretty much going in the water and the drop zone is 410 feet and it is difficult this is really high I like the height though because it'll give it a chance to work back left oh yes okay a little pinched off, though. That's going to compromise his swing just a bit, so he's going to have to manufacture some sort of scramble look. Please get through the trees here. I just don't want to see the evil trees impact this. James. Commitment. Very commitment. Yeah, committed shot is the that's the call for sure. There it is. And sliding in, and that's going to be a lengthy approach with some navigating trees to do. But that's a he's done the first thing he needed to do. He's avoided the trees at the edge of the water. I can't stress how difficult that shot is. As Calvin just turns this perfectly, oh. gets a tree. But mm -hmm. but back to James T shot. Stepping up to this hole, I've thought about going from left to right, but the commitment that it takes, one little wind lift or bad angle can drop you right in the water. You don't see a lot of people go that wide. So James in complete control. Kevin flipping this up. Does it stay too flipped or does it just skip right? Oh, it does. Late and perfect. Man, that guy has so much resolve. It's, it is... Inspiring to watch a man younger than 25 able to just play like he's a veteran of 20 years plus. My drive on 18. Must have it. Get up. And that is not in the position you need to be in to have any sort of freedom to go for it. Yeah. 
so far back, playing about 340 feet, and that's going to kick way left. And the problems just keep going for Calvin down the stretch. Maybe one of the biggest shots in James's life right now with Macbeth farther up the fairway. And let's not forget, James is a USDGC champion. He has major championship experience. He knows how to win. He's done it. This is needing to get by these. Okay. Oh, my wow. gosh. Wow. Look at the scoot. What a shot from James. And once again, match play. Pressure's on you, Paul. Yeah, if you're what watching at home, oh learn how to land the disc flat so that nothing unlucky can happen. And that's what James just did there. He played mm -hmm. catch with the basket, turned it through there, as we saw Sexton do from almost a very similar position. And down the stretch of big tournaments, it's the easy ones that you need to practice. Yep. An awkward stance for Macbeth. One of the best awkward stance throwers we've ever seen in the game. And he just makes it look. <laughs> isn't His it, wife Hannah looking on, loving it. Isn't it funny how it comes down to these 250-foot shots so often? And you see everybody mm -hmm. practicing these power shots and trying to get over 500 feet and this and the other thing. But down the stretch of these major championships, it comes down to 200-foot island holes, 250-foot island holes. 29-foot putts. Yep, exactly. 25 to 29 and landing the disc soft, being in control of the easy things make you into the dominant players that these guys are. And just like that, Kev... Five back, still chasing, still charging. It's not going to be his year this time. Paul Macbeth is outside the circle. Just barely, but you see that feather right in front of his disc. 35 footer. How do you beat this man? Well, people don't, it seems. It, that wasn't an inch off of dead center in height or left to right. That was perfect when your stroke turns into a fist pump as it goes up you're, you're on you're on one you've done it before yeah about five times i think this one feels 18 feet but actually pardon me feels about 29 <laughs> for james i don't know man this man is locked in as well this is perfect Nice. Good one going into 18 as well. Being able to find the middle. We yep. saw a couple of his putts leaking left and right and getting those good catches. So now he has a, a nice one coming down to the last hole. And Paul's going to tee first. And this is after your layup. This is your third shot wide, but hysering in and safe. And that is going to wrap up your six under round, and that's going to move you or keep you at 35 under. Ricky Waisaki, a great performance once again at the World Championships, a crowd favorite, throwing stickers and other merchandise, getting the fans ready for this last card to come in. One stroke separating first and second. Nate Sexton for third place at the World Championships. The podium finish. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I am so proud of you right now, my friend. Thank you. It was a good week. Uh, you could say that again. Say it again. I'll say it. What a week. <laughs> what a week for you, Nate. Hole 18. Oh, my goodness. Very impressive. Nate, what do we got? Par four, 650, Macbeth up first. A big drive here could really put a lot of pressure on James. It's so important <laughs> to have the drive in the right spot. You have nothing, you can't, you cannot manufacture it from the edge of the water. You need to push this up, up and left. If Paul keeps this inbounds, James has to birdie. Looks a little heavy on the hyzer. This needs to get Sit. down quickly. Sit. Sit. 
sit. Oh my goodness. Wow. And not only does it sit, it puts him in a position where he can see the basket. So if James does a good shot here, Paul can elect to go for the basket. James has to put one in perfect position. I've seen so many shots not get the sit that he did and push out out of bounds left. Okay. Miss the trees. Miss the trees. Miss. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, oh sit. He stays in bounds, but oh, I cannot barely. imagine that oh. he has a play for the green. No chance. Okay. There's no chance from there. And that gives Paul the opportunity to just play it safe now. Calvin, a similar shot, but this looks like it's going to get through, and it does, and it's going to get to the road and across the road. A beautiful shot. Haven't seen one better. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's what James needed right there. And Kevin, that is a good spot. That's going to be 320 feet. Tough angle, though. He's going to have mm -hmm. to push that with a lot of hyzer, understable disc, hugging the mandatory. So James, oh, James he's just, laying up. He's just going to lay up. I thought maybe he'd have to do some sort of big roller or sky anheuser, do something crazy. And again, this is a tough layup. Like, this isn't easy. There's out of bounds everywhere. There is a mandatory pull that you have to get past, especially with James being a backhand predominant player. And that's a little short, too. I'm sure he'd like another 15, exactly. 20 feet. It's going to be a slightly obstructed shot from there, but it's... Yeah, and he's been throwing that hyzer stall very nicely. He's not going to be able to do that on this next shot. And Macbeth clear to just lay up now. Kevin. Wow, keep wow. Keep it in, and he does. Wow. I, I love this young man. Kevin Jones, I mean, how can you not? This guy is just positive energy and great disc golf. So no need for Macbeth to do anything outside of this right here. Put all the pressure on James to throw the shot of his life. And just like I said, it comes down to little up shots, right? Being in control. Calvin Heimberg first after maybe the best drive of the tournament on hole 18. Just a little chipper. I mean, he's looking right at it. That's, That's where layups go. Insane. Wow. And uh, he's going to finish the Worlds in a great way with a birdie on 18. Nothing decided yet. Weird things happen. What was that? This is a tight little green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of these players need to execute now. Super tough shot. James, 252 to the pin. It's got to go in. I mean, he's got he's to gotta get it around the corner and get it inbounds no matter what. No. Give no! Me that. No! Oh, oh, my God! my goodness. Oh, my God! Oh! That is why you dream, folks. That oh. is why oh my God. dreams do come true right there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sex and women. I mean, what words do you have? It has to be the best shot I've ever seen. I mean, if you account for the moment, account for the stakes. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're going, this is, this is in all likelihood, we're going to a playoff. Paul still has to get up and down. Like now all, oh, that I, there's never been this amount of pressure on one person to get up and down from 200 feet ever. It, Paul has, I, I've lost my point. Paul has done everything exactly. He has had the lead the entire time. And he's thrown every shot exactly how he's needed to. And he's made every putt. And he stepped up to the scenario that he needed to every time. And it still came down to James throwing in from 250 blind around the corner. He was looking into the sun. He couldn't even see the basket. Paul can't see the basket. This is not a gimme. I, 
I cannot believe what I just saw. Go. Okay. Okay. It's the greatest shot I've ever seen. It's I, the greatest shot of all time. It's the greatest shot of all time. I can't even believe it. It's the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs. It's more. It's game bigger. seven in the World Series. It's bigger. With a grand slam. I mean, it's more unlikely than hitting a home run. It's more. It's bigger. That's crazy. I'm. If Paul knocks us down, guess what, guys? Playoff. Island hole. Hole 16, hole 17, hole 18 on a loop. And Paul is knocking this down. Yeah, I mean, there's not. There's. We're, we've got we're not extra done. We've we are got not extra, done. No, not even close. Think about the putts Paul just made in a row just to put him in position to where he can just lay up for the win. And then Jim, James says, no, I'm not done. He couldn't see the pin. He's holding his disc up to shield his eyes from the sun. I can't even imagine what's going through Paul's mind right now. Uh, he, I mean, he's done everything right. You got to know that he's... Uh, Kevin Jones, what a birdie, what a finish, what a champion. It's not his year this year, but man, this guy, his story is not written, and neither is this event. We've got more holes to play at the 2021 World Championships. Look at the card. We need everybody to stay here. The finish, the close from Macbeth and Conrad, unreal on the fort on this back nine. Uh. I, James Conrad acing hole 16 okay. early in the week. This is now Conrad Corner. This is this is, this is his grounds right We're now. We're going to give them 10 minutes to get their scores finalized, recorded, and then the playoff. It, we're going to play holes 16, 17, and 18 in succession until we have a winner. Uh, Sudden death. Pure bedlam, folks. I need everybody to clear the fairways, please. Good luck with that. Yeah. Starts in 10 Everyone minutes. listen. Please, give us 10 <laughs> please remain calm. Uh, impossible to do. Impossible to do. That is a moment that every single person that just witnessed that in person will never forget. And we're here. Top of the hill. Hole 16. Calm conditions. And once again, Conrad going for the riskier shot. That tree comes in play, but it comes in soft. And that is so important. I'm scared for Conrad. This is way more difficult than the sidearm play. And that not looks... for James. Apparently and not for James. <laughs> look at it. It's coming backwards. Oh, so perfect. He's parked. This man is made out of what it takes. Oh, my goodness. Can Paul step up? One more time. Going forehand. Looks good. Yep. Just, just check on the green. Just sit. He's calling it to sit. Oh, no. No. no way. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. James Conrad is going to be the world champion. Yeah, it's over. Oh, my I mean, gosh. Paul has, Paul has 80 feet for par. James is 10 feet. It's over. Oh, Unbelievable my Unbelievable finish to throw in from 250 feet to force it, to park it, put all the pressure on Paul. Unfortunately, he does push long into the water and James Conrad is gonna win the 2021 PDGA World Championship. And honestly, Paul's disc had no chance to stop. That had too much juice from the get-go. That wasn't a bad break. That it didn't hit, roll in. It didn't, it didn't roll, roll in. It, was it skipped going all the way. In. Yeah, it was going in no matter what. James plays the better shot the stall shot, nothing could happen except for he was going to be parked. What a moment. What, what a chapter in the history of disc golf has just been written. And this is just a formality. And, and whether you're watching this for the first time or you're watching this on repeat for the 30th time, I hope you understand the magnitude of this, of this moment, of what just took place in the last 20 minutes. Just low, and James has nothing left to do but walk up here on legs made out of jello <laughs> and try to tap in uh, to become world champion. Paul with the fist bump because yeah. all he can say is hats off. You earned it. You are the world champion. There it is. 
I chills. The things that this man overcame this year, switching companies, learning these discs, he has them absolutely dialed. And look at the celebration with his best friends. Paul with another tap on the back and a smile from him as well. You know what six means for Paul, for him to be able to celebrate or give James the, the, the props that he does this deserved. It shows a lot about Paul's medal. <laughs> he just takes a big oh. old chug. Oh, that has never tasted so good. <laughs> Look at this trophy, 50 pounds. The bell, the champion, James Conrad. Now has a USDGC title and a world title. This man has now put himself as one of the best disc golfers of all time. And the crowd knows it. Enjoy the Hall of Fame in 10, 15 years, buddy. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Wow. One of five players ever to win the U.S. title and the world title. Wow, yeah, it was a, such a fun day. I had such a great card out there. Paul McBeth, such a great competitor. I'm, I'm honored to compete with him and Kevin and Calvin, such great great humans to be playing disc golf with. And yeah, just so much fun today. To, to be able to make that shot from maybe 200 feet on 18, still almost doesn't, doesn't feel real, you know? Like I saw it go in, but it's still like hard to even believe. It was it's what I was trying to do and it worked. Like I said, the crowd was so spectacular today. It, just the energy from you all was just amazing. Like, it, it's the best feeling in the world to, to feel that much love from that many people at once. So thank you all again. There were probably some nerves nerves in play. Um, and then also it was it was really tight back there. You know, the, some of those opening holes, like I, I felt a little claustrophobic on the tee pad and it was hard for me to really just get calm and, and get into, into my own rhythm. And then I started just stepping a little further away from the group and everything. And, started to calm down and started to really get my tee shots on point and that's what allowed me to start coming back. Yeah, I wasn't trying to build up too much of a story in my head. I was just trying to focus everything I had on each shot that I was throwing and it was able to work out pretty well for me. I just want to keep having fun, keep playing disc golf and hopefully keep playing well. It's a blast. watching online right now give your shout outs the stage is yours give a huge shout out to my tour family and my friends my girlfriend jordan like their, su their support they just really lift me up all the time and it's amazing what, amazing what she all can do for me i want to give a huge shout out to my family back in virginia they're also some of my biggest supporters on the planet i'm sure they're watching in, in blacksburg love you mom and dad um yeah and a huge shout out to mvp they, they really started taking care of me this year and they they make some great discs so thank you I see sweat, I see tears, I see champagne. He's got it all right now. Ugh. I've seen a lot of sporting events in my life. I've been there, I've seen it on TV. This is the best moment I have ever seen in all of sports alone. in my life. It stands alone. And He's I am lucky to be seven. here with you guys here in the booth. Oh. I feel privileged. Oh. I am now speechless. Please take over, Chills. guys. Goosebumps, chills, nine under, seven down in the back nine. He was over par at one point in this round. 
and did every single thing he could. He scratched, he clawed, he threw the best shot in disc golf history. And I can't wait for this to be on. Uh, I want to watch it over and over again. Check Sports Center, because that's where this one's going. Incredible stuff. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the volunteers. Thank you to Grip Six. Thank you to the Utah team. Thank you to the PDGA. Thank you to the fans and the Founders Club. We at Jomez Pro had an amazing time covering this event and bringing it to you. And we'll be back. Thank you so much. World Championships is over and James Conrad is king.